Welcome back, everyone, you may be wondering where I am. Well, this is a new, freshly made room for the upcoming LV workshop. So, let's start working on it. Here we shall have a battery buffer to feed a line of machines. And, to charge it up, we shall have a turbine underneath. This turbine runs on steam, which we are going to pipe from the large tank that fuels our steam workshop. Once we connect all the pipes, we can see it starts spinning, but, to have a proper fluid flow, we must tickle all the connections, and thus we now have power in our battery buffer and we can lay down a line of cables for the upcoming machinery. And, before starting to do anything useful, we are reminded about caution measures before starting to deal with electric machines. The first one we are going to craft shall be a wire mill. We place it in next to the power line and connect it using wire cutters. This machine will make two wires out of one ingot and without damaging any tool. The next machine in the line shall be a bending machine, which will make one plate with one ingot. Now that we can make parts for cheaper, we shall make a couple of hoppers for automation. However, we shouldn't use hoppers for the outputs. We are going to use item pipes which are way cheaper. However, these don't have automatic pull, but, machines have an automatic push. And we use a wrench to set the output direction. The next machine shall be one of the few that doesn't require circuits, a polarizer. We need it for polarizing steel, since that can't be done with magnetite. For the moment, we can use magnetized steel for making an electromagnet, which has to be charged. This magnet will greatly help us collecting minerals when we go mining. The next machine shall be a lathe, which, in this version, makes two rods out of one ingot. Now that we have all of these machines running, we are starting to empty our battery buffer. And the issue goes all the way back to our steam production, our steam tank is empty. To increase our steam production, we have built a large bronze boiler. However, this is a multi-block and thus, to run at full efficiency, it will need maintenance. We can better check which kind by holding shift while looking at the controller. Once we fixed every issue it had, it is now capable of running at maximum efficiency. Now we can set up a fuel feeding system. And it looks like the hopper is too slow if we use sticks. With coal, it looks fine, however. We quickly realize that this boiler makes too much steam. Once it heats up, it will produce 800 liters per tick. That requires a huge boat in pipe and will fill our tank before it even fully heats up. To avoid that, we are going to throttle it to the minimum, so that a normal boat and pipe can suffice. Now that we have fixed everything, we can turn it on and see a proper amount of steam being produced. Half stack of coal should be enough for filling our tank so we are probably only going to start it up when needed. Once it heats up with these settings, it will produce 200 liters per tick of steam, which will fill up our tank really fast. Now that we have fixed the power issues, we can go back to adding new machines. The next one shall be the assembler. This machine will greatly cut the costs of many things. However, for most of its uses is going to need glue, and we want that to be passively feed. So, we place the assembler in a spot where it can have one more side free. And we can already start using it for making cheaper hoppers. Once we have the hoppers, we can have the output on the left, we restore the wire mill hopper but on its right, and we feed the assembler from the top. And, on the back, we shall hide the two machines that will keep tea stocked with glue, to get the distilled water needed as catalyst for the resin production, we are going to quickly use the distiller which will then be dedicated to glue. And then we are going to have some issues with the way faces have to be rotated with the latex collector. Because machines can't output from the front space and this one needs a log on the back face. And since I do not want to have a log in my ism wall, we shall have a log between our machinery hoppers. And there we have it, an assembler with infinite glue. Now we can start making cheap resists and cheap circuit boards. 
However, these are the circuit boards for the first tier of machinery. We are soon going to want to make the second tier ones. And it appears that the quest book wants us to obtain bigger amounts of silver in a more convoluted chain that starts from an electrolyzer. Since the electrolyzer needs some silver wires to be made and we run out of pure silver ore, we are going to first make an air collector. We bring the air to our old but upgraded steam roaster, so that we can roast some weird silver containing mineral into silver oxide. Which we then roast again to obtain pure silver dust. And thus we have all the material required for crafting an electrolyzer. We are going to place it on our workshop line, even tough it shouldn't be part of a workshop. To use it, instead of circuits, we need rods to use as electrodes. However, managing it outputs like that won't be easy, so we void them by breaking the machine. And we put it hidden under the other machines, where it can have water fed by a pipe. And the output is going inside a quadruple pipe which can handle both the gases at once. Then, using a pump with a filter upgrade, we can sort the two gases inside two tanks. And here's the final result, a system that keeps two drums filled with oxygen and hydrogen. However, that electrolyzer is just a small toy, we should probably work on the better electrolytic cell for real work. But, for the moment, we can just make a small setup that doesn't even need electrolysis but uses normal air to produce a decent amount of silver. The issue is that this setup produces some excess gases as byproduct. We can get rid of them using a leaky wooden pipe. And that didn't work for long. So, we are gonna to stock up some of these gases inside a couple of drums. Since we want to keep these tanks full, we shall slow down the flow with some copper pipes. Which will then move the excess gases to a smokestack that will vent the excess gases into the atmosphere. And I hope there is no pollution mechanics in this pack. All that new machinery increased our power usage, so we added a second turbine and increased the steam pipe size. And we are lucky that the copper pipes are slowing down the new machinery. Anyways, now that we have a lot of silver, we can make the advanced circuit boards. To use these, we are also going to need a bunch of diodes. And thus we have a new assembler and an extractor. With these new machines, we quickly make the diodes and then we use them for making good electronic circuits, which are our first MV tier item. Then, we make some quartzite using a centrifuge and an autoclave to complete our LV circuit assembler. With that machine, we can use less resources to make twice the amount of circuits. And, in this Greg Tech version, the soldering alloy appears to not be lead free. And with that machine I think we have completed the low power part of our LV workshop.